So in order to run these kinds of experiments efficiently, um, to be able to gather the data that you need. Um, and then I imagine with things like a simulation, you know, even having um, the, the reinforcement learning environments easily available and usable by the people who need them. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, um, what key investments does an organization need to make um, in order to reach that kind of this great solid foundation that you had at Lyft? Um, like what kind of, yeah, what kinds of things could uh, listeners be doing at their own company to be building to that same kind of um, great foundation that Lyft has? Yeah, that's a, it's an excellent question. I mean, and I, and I wouldn't say that we were, we were totally succeeding at all those things at, at Lyft, but I, I will, I'll tell you what we were trying to do. Uh, number one is, yeah, an investment in platforms and, you know, recognizing when you have a problem that's not going away and making the requisite investment to solve it in a way that's good in the medium and the long run, in addition to like, you know, sacri and you sacrifice something in the short run to do that. Building a platform means waiting, you know, months or years until something's ready. And then you know that you have some trust that when you hit the point where your platform is mature, that you're going to get all the benefits from that. Um, so we've worked on this, you know, Bayesian optimization system for our experimentation platform, where we could introduce these continuous parameters and run experiments that would vary those in a rigorous way and, and converge toward the better values. And you know, it takes it took over a year to until we were running like experiments like that at a high at a high bandwidth, um, and it was because we had to make a big uh, long term investment up front. Right. And part of that isn't just the technology, it's the culture of kind of acknowledging that um, that these long-term projects are the future of the company and they, they pay a big long-term dividend. And so you have to kind of pay a lot up front. And so you have all these people working on things that you're not going to benefit from in the short run, but that like leadership is okay with that and you're willing to reward people and you know keep them incentivized to, to do projects like that. It's hard at tech companies because I think people often want to have this like six month review cycle where a project is successful within six months and people get, you know, get promotions and get bonuses and raises within six months or a year. And sometimes these problems are just like fundamentally more difficult than that. Um, and that's culture. I think you just need to sort of, you know, keep people uh, eyes on the long term prize um, and then doing that while, you know, you have a short term business that is very volatile. I mean, like Lyft is a company where there's like, there was COVID while I was there. And so a lot of people stopped right. riding Lyft. And right. that is something that you feel like you need to immediately drop everything and respond to. But if you keep your eyes on the long term, you say like, hey, three or four years from now, COVID will be over. And we really wish that we had built this platform. Um, uh, so the culture was a big part of it as well. Also, I guess the, the third thing would be like assembling the right people, which is a really hard problem. It's like, oh, what yeah. complementary set of skills do you need to solve problems like that? And like, yeah, like, you know, reinforcement learning researcher from a top university would be a great person to add to the lift, but they're not going to be super productive unless you have somebody who really understands the engineering or the, you know, the idiosyncrasies of the data that are being produced by a company like Lyft. So you just, you need like such a diverse set of skills um, to make projects like that work. 